All right, I'd like to take a minute to talk a little bit about thermodynamics, more specifically the laws of thermodynamics. These are the laws that govern the whole field of thermodynamics. Literally, um, thermodynamics means the power of heat. If you think about mechanics, and there's a section in mechanics called dynamics, and that's where we studied forces and how forces caused objects to move. Well, it's the same thing here. We're looking at what causes heat to move, thermo, and we're forcing heat to move, thermodynamics. Um, typically, this field, at least at the high school level, gets very little attention, um, maybe a couple of weeks, uh, it's, it, which, is, which is really bad, sad, because um, it's a very interesting area of physics, but the reason it typically does get so, such little attention is it's very complicated, and it's really challenging, um, one of the harder classes I've, I've ever taken. But let's look at the laws that govern thermodynamics, and these are equivalent to Newton's laws that govern forces. The first one I'm going to start with is a little unusual, and um, it's actually been referred to as the zeroth law of thermodynamics, which in summary means um, thermal equilibrium. If two objects at different temperatures are in contact with each other, one's going to warm up, one's going to cool down, they come into thermal equilibrium, they reach the same temperature. Um, this more and more sources are referring to this as the zeroth law simply because this was commonly accepted fact, but not until relatively recently have people started acknowledging it as a law of thermodynamics. And at this, at that time, there was already several other laws established, and it didn't make sense calling it the fourth law of thermodynamics, so they called it, called it the zeroth law. Um, somewhat interesting. A lot of books don't refer to it. More and more websites um, that I have seen are referring to it. Okay, so, first law of thermodynamics, which is starting to get into a little bit more normal stuff, at least on that uh, textbooks address. Um, doing work on an object can change its internal energy, simply a restatement of the conservation of energy. Um, and, and a lot of times it's captured in a formula that looks like this. The change in the internal energy, delta U, is equal to the, the heat put into the system and the work done um, on the system. Now, it is, in, it is important to note, some references will have Q minus W instead of the plus sign. And the reason they do that is they define W as the work done by the system. So whether it's delta U is Q plus W or delta U is Q minus W, ultimately they mean the same thing. They're just two different, um, pers uh, they're just two different definitions of what W represents. So then the second law is one of my more so, so to speak, one of my more favorite laws, and probably one of the more confusing ones, I think. Um, basically, if you just let nature run its course, systems become more and more disordered, unless action is taken, unless you put energy into that system to keep it orderly. This is commonly referred to as entropy. Now, this, this is a pretty confusing topic, um, I think. Entropy um, is a measure of the disorder in a system, of a system's chaos. Um, it also refers to the degree that the energy, that energy in the system is wasted. Um, it also can be referred to as the amount of useful energy not available to do work. All processes have energy. Some of this energy can be used to do work. Some of this energy is not. It's, it's useless energy, so to speak. This is a measure of useful energy that can't be used to do work. It, it's really quite confusing, and I very well might not have done a very good job explaining it. Um, the second law basically states that a system's entropy can only increase. In other words, the, a system given um, left on its own will just become more and more disordered. More and more energy gets wasted. Um, a, 
not necessarily the best example, but a pretty decent example is this house. At one time, this house is probably a pretty cool looking house, um, almost a little bit like a castle it looks like. But now it's really quite dilapidated. Um, obviously, at some point in time, people started or people stopped um, putting work into the house. Um, they, they stopped updating it. Uh, they just let it go. And the natural process is for this house to fall apart. And as it falls more and more apart, its entropy level increases. Um, another way of viewing it is in order to keep the entropy level down, to keep it orderly, you have to put energy into that house. Um, and as it gets more and more a higher and higher level of entropy, it's it's not going to be a, it's not going to make for a very good house. So its useful energy level is decreasing. If you consider a properly a brand new house has a lot of energy it, 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 in doing its job and providing shelter, this house has little energy level to do its job in providing shelter. There's other consequences associated with the second law, and, and, and this is why it's it's such a huge idea. Um, think about a heat engine. Um, a heat engine will not completely convert heat into work. Some of the heat that the heat engine uses is lost to its surroundings, and this introduces the idea of efficiency. You put so much heat into a system, you can only get a little, you, you're not going to get that much work out, or you're going to get less work out. This is because of entropy. This this is because the natural um, order is to go into wasting energy in one manner or another, and it can't be avoided. <clears throat> By nature, processes only go in one direction, hot to cold, high energy to low energy, order to chaos. You can go in the opposite direction. You could go from chaos to order, but it requires energy. And all that energy that you use to, to um, drive the orderliness, if I may use that word, will not be used. So here's an example of something that I kind of use sometimes in class. Um, I got a glass, and we just put a little drop of um, food coloring in there, and right away the food coloring starts dispersing. Now, in all this area where I see nice clear water, it is still orderly. And right here, where the where the um, food coloring is the darkest, the food coloring molecules are still pretty orderly. The water here is still pretty orderly. There's not a lot of chaos. There's not a lot of randomness. And not a lot of mixture between the blue and the clear water. So now the entropy level is still kind of low. And if we let it continue running as the, um, as the food coloring disperses through the water, the entropy level is increasing. It's becoming more and more random. And if we just continue to let it play, and it doesn't take very long for this to occur. I did speed it up a little bit, um, and so this is taking approximately, this part's approximately 30 seconds to a minute. Um, but then we jump ahead in time a little bit. More and more. And this is what we end up with after about five minutes or so. All the food coloring is distributed through the water. Very random. They're not very orderly. A high level of entropy. We can probably take the food coloring out of the water, but it's going to take a fair amount of work. And remember, work is energy. Third law of thermodynamics a lot of people are familiar with just simply refers to um, absolute zero. Um, as we approach absolute zero, the um, entropy of a system approaches um, some minimal or approaches zero. The amount of useful energy that the system has approaches zero. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, think about it. As the temperature goes up, the particles um, move around faster and faster. They, be they become more random the entropy increases. Um, and it's just the opposite is true. As the temperature goes down, the entropy decreases. Um, an interesting um, something to consider is that the second law prevents us from reaching absolute zero. Absolute zero is a theoretical 
um, point. It's, we've gotten very close to it, like within millionths of a degree, but we haven't reached absolute zero because we can't through the second law. Now, a little quick summary of the of the of the four laws. Um, again, the zeroth law, thermal equilibrium. A lot of people don't recognize this as a law of thermodynamics. Um, that's okay. First law, um, doing work on something will change its internal energy. Um, in 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 other terms, the first law says we're not going to win. Um, just like you go to Vegas, you except you might win at Vegas you won't win with the first law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics not only says you won't win, you won't even break even. We will lose. We will lose energy somehow. Even if we do nothing, we will lose energy. Um, I like to refer to the second law simply as nature is lazy. It's always going to take the lazy way out. Energy moves from high to low. Third law is absolute zero. When we're at zero Kelvin, um, the particles have no entropy, perfectly still, um, and, and, and theoretically the no energy um, standpoint. So this was a quick um, review of, again, what I refer to as the four laws of thermodynamics. Um, some books only refer to two or three, um, but that's okay. Hope you got something out of it. Thanks a lot.